Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moykins from Big Mountain Studio, and in this and in continuing this series of videos, we're talking about reusable pop-ups. In the previous videos, we talked about passing data back and forth from the reusable pop-up back to the view controller that opened it. And in this video, we're going to talk about a third way to pass data back from the pop-up to the view controller that opened it, and that is with the use of delegation. So let's take a look at the current state of our application right now. We have a tab, tabbed application, and on the first tab, we use the notification center to pass data back from our pop-up to the view controller that called it. So when I click save date, it just puts it right up here. And in the second tab, we use a method of callbacks. So when we open up the pop-up, we can select a different date, click save date, and it puts the date up here. And that's using callbacks, not notifications. So in the third one, we're going to talk about delegation. And this pop-up is a little bit different when you click on it, it shows the time instead. So with this pop-up, we're going to select a, a time, and then we're going to click Save Time, and then it's going to put it up here. We're going to use that using delegation. So what does delegation mean? Well, I have the definition down here, and it basically means giving responsibility to another person or something else. And that's kind of like what's going on here, because what we're going to do is we're going to provide all the code and instructions that this pop-up needs in order to populate the view controller that opened it. So we're going to take all of our code, we're going to wrap it up in a class, and we're going to pass this class with all of its instructions in it so the pop-up knows what to do when we click on save time. And that is delegation. Now if you remember from callback, what we did is we took a block of code or a function and we passed in just that function into the pop-up. Well delegation is similar, except we're not just passing one function, we're actually passing a whole class. So let's see how that's done. So here's our delegation window. And what we want to do is we want to look at the view controller code. And here you see the code that we created previously in the first tutorial to open up the pop-up. Now what we want to do is we want to be able to provide a delegate to this pop-up. So it's going to look something like this. We're going to say pop-up dot delegate. And then we can say equals self. But this property doesn't exist yet. And what exactly do we mean when we say self? What's actually getting passed? Well, what's actually going to get passed is this whole class is going to pass itself into this class, which is a view controller. So we're taking one view controller and we're passing it into another view controller. And this, this pattern right here might look familiar. You probably do this with table views. And that's exactly what's happening. When you say table view dot delegate equals self, you're actually taking the view controller and you're passing it into the table view. And your view controller has instructions for the table view, so it knows what to do when certain events fire off. So at this point, you might be asking yourself, well, if I'm passing in this view controller and I'm assigning it to this property, then why can't I just make this property a select time view controller? Well, that's one thing you could do. It's not really a good practice though, because remember, this pop-up is reusable. And if we come here and we create a class called delegate, and we say the type is select time view controller, well, what happens when you want to assign the first view controller, you know, this file up here, or the second view controller as the delegate? Then it's not going to work because they're two different types. So that's why you don't want to hard code it to a very specific type because you want to be reusable as possible. Okay, so what data type should this delegate be then? Well, that's probably the first thing you want to set up when you're implementing the delegate pattern is you want to define a blueprint or a set of functions that this class will need to execute. And that right there is the definition for a protocol. And Apple says a protocol defines a blueprint of methods, properties, and other requirements that suit a particular task or piece of functionality. And that's what we're going to do. The only task we have for this class is just what to do when we click that save button. Okay, so that's the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our protocol class. So let's create a new file, Swift file, and I'm just going to call this a pop-up delegate. Okay, so it's down here, pop-up delegate. Now to define this file, you first start off with the word protocol. And I'm just going to hit enter, and then I'm going to name it the same as my file name. Now we have our requirements. And 
Remember the Apple definition is, it's a blueprint of methods, properties, and other requirements. So for us, we're only going to have one requirement, and I'll call it pop-up value selected. And we're going to pass a string into it. Okay, then that's it. That's all I need to define right there. I don't actually define what happens inside of this function. Okay, so let's go back to our date pop-up view controller. Now let's set this type to that protocol. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a question mark here because I'm going to make it optional. So the person can still use this without supplying a pop-up delegate. But now what we're going to do is we're going to conform to this pop-up delegate. And that is basically kind of like another way of saying we're going to implement the functions in this pop-up delegate with this view controller. Okay, now what I could do is I could just come here and I can say pop-up delegate. And then it's going to expect me to implement the functions inside of this class. But instead what I like to do is use an extension. So it kind of keeps things separate. Keeps To me, it's cleaner. And an extension, by the way, is just taking a class and you're extending it or adding more things to it but it's actually the same class. I don't know if some of you come from the C-sharp background, but uh, extension would be like a partial, like a partial class, and protocol is like an interface. Okay, now one of the new features in Xcode here, which I love, I actually submitted this feature request back during, I don't know, I think like a few versions ago in Xcode, and I'm glad they, they finally came out with it. Because uh, this is this functionality right here is, is very common in other development environments, so I'm glad Xcode caught up. So now what you can do is basically it allows you to uh, create a stub, or kind of like an empty function to implement or conform to this protocol. There we go right here. And what's going to happen inside this function? Well, this is basically where we set that label, right? Oh, you know what? But we don't actually have a label yet. Okay, so let's get a label in there. I'm just going to be lazy about this. I'm going to copy this. Come back here. I'm going to paste it in here. And then I need to uh, wire up this, this label. So let's open up our storyboard. And this will be the... I'm going to rename this first to time label because we're not dealing with dates on this one we're dealing with time I'm just going to hook it up this way okay now what I want to do is I want to set the time label to this value that's passed in like that all right so at this point you might be asking yourself well where is this value actually coming from well here's what's actually happening so now we have this, this function here, and, and it's part of this class right here, and we're passing this class into the delegate. So now your pop-up has this function through its delegate. So if we come back to our delegate, and here's the our delegate right here. Now when we come down to selecting the time, we're going to be coming into this function, and now we can just call our delegate. And remember, it can be nil, so I'm going to put, put a question mark there. And then we're going to call that function populate selected value. And this is where we're going to pass in the formatted time, right here. Now what I'm going to do is, is this function right here was from our previous video on callbacks. But it's okay if I leave it in here because, because it has that question mark, this on save will be nil. And so it won't cause an error. It'll just skip over that and nothing will happen. And then it'll come in here. And because we have delegate po populated, it's going to call this function and it's going to pass in this formatted time. So we also need that down here too. And this will just be a format date. Okay, so let's test this and see how it looks. All right, looks great. Okay, so let's cover what is actually happening here. All that's happening here is remember this delegate 
is really your select time view controller. But you may have noticed that here, let, let me show you this again, that when I hit dot, the only function that shows is the pop-up value selected. That's because all this delegate recognizes are functions from the, this pop-up delegate protocol. And in this protocol, it's simply one function. So if I add another function in here, like if I just say function do stuff like this, now two things will have to happen. I'll have to implement this do stuff in my select time view controller. And then when I come to the date pop-up view controller, that function will be available to me. So I can call that function too. But what's actually going to happen when I call this? Well, it depends on whatever my select time view controller tells it to happen. So I'm in control. I, I will supply this functionality. And that is why it's delegation because it's passing off the responsibility to me to tell it what to do. And this is exactly what happens with a table view. When you supply it with a delegate or a data source, you are telling the table view what you want to have happen when it shows a cell or when you select a cell or when you swipe a cell, you are the one who's telling it what to do. And that is the pattern of delegation. So let's get rid of this and let's go back to our protocol and get rid of that. So this is kind of like an advanced topic and it can be kind of hard to get your head around it and to understand it. So again, let's go over the three steps that you have to do when you want to use the delegation pattern. The first thing you have to do is create your protocol and you want to tell it which functions you want in that protocol. And then the second thing you want to do is you want to create a property to hold that delegate. And we did that in our date pop-up view controller. We created a property right here to hold that delegate. And the third thing you want to do is you want to conform to this protocol. And that's kind of like the terminology that uh, Apple uses or Swift uses is you conform to a protocol or you implement the protocol. So we did that in our select time view controller. We said that this class is going to conform to this protocol and to conform to it basically means you have to supply the code for these functions. Whatever is in that delegate, you have to supply the code and you have to tell it what you want to have happen. And that's conforming to a protocol. So those are the three steps to using the delegation pattern. All right, great guys. So you learned three different ways of how to pass data back from this series. You learned how to use the notification center to pass data back. You learned how to use callbacks to pass data back. And now you've learned the delegation pattern on how to pass data back. So let me know in the comments below which pattern you like the most and why you like it, which one you think will be easier for you. What are some of the pros and cons that you feel that these patterns have to offer? Thanks guys. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Please share this video with any of your coworkers who you think might be interested. And if you'd like to help out, you can always supply a translation for just the title in the description in your native language. That'll help people in your country find these videos and help them learn how to develop an iOS. And consider subscribing because there's one more video that's coming out where we're going to talk about memory leaks. Because some of these patterns can cause memory leaks and could cause problems in your application. So I'm going to show you how to detect memory leaks and then how to fix them. All right, thanks guys.